Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Rob, Feedback Grinch. I just wanted to talk a little bit. Um, we're going to reach this political moment really quick here where there's going to be a deeper divide politically than what I think we're truly understanding. But it's going to come down to this. Will conservative business people, business owners, and professionals hire liberals? And will liberal business owners, <laughs> liberal business owners and professionals hire conservatives? On each side, where does the line get drawn where your political affiliation and the way you conduct yourself about politics impact the way your organization ought to hire, fire, or keep you around or not. You know, we saw it a little bit over the last four years where people wearing MAGA hats, the red Trump hats, were starting to like have their voices silenced a little bit, but basically it was like, don't wear the hat, right? Don't wear the hat, don't wear the shirt. We don't like the shirt. We think it's hate speech, right? But, you know, I've made a couple hires in my business. And for me to hire somebody, we have to have, there's the three C's, character, chemistry, and competency. You have to meet all three of those. And for me, chemistry, I don't know how I could have an employee that believes in collectivism, that doesn't understand supply and demand economics and how demand side economics actually creates nothing and that destroying incentives like the incent the, <laughs> there's two opposing viewpoints here guys one says that if you make money off of the labor of others that you're evil and that you're the evil capitalist and the other one says wait a minute I want to create jobs and hire you <laughs> like that's where we're at I don't know that I can hire somebody that's been duped into thinking that profiting off of the labor of others is somehow bad when what it is is that people need entrepreneurs and businesses to get started and run so that they have somewhere to work you got to make sales you got to execute and if you want to get the fruits of your own labor and you don't want to work for somebody else if you're truly a socialist go make sales and execute and don't work for anybody go do it yourself because that's what I did as an entrepreneur and I don't know how I would hire somebody who believes that I'm not entitled to the fruits of my labor and that they would think that it's appropriate to increase the percentages, not just increase the amount of taxes I would pay. They take a percentage of my income from me using the state at threat of gunpoint. Not only that, they say the more successful I am, the higher that percentage should be. Increasing percentages is mind boggling. Because the way percentages work is the more you make, the more you pay. That would be fair. I, I don't know if I could jive with that. I don't know if I could lead that. I don't think it, it would be such a chemistry bumper for me in my business that I don't think it would work. Now, I have clients that are Democrats, but most of my clients are conservative people. Or they're at least to the point where they, they want to keep as much of their money as they can. And I, I've never met a business owner that wants to round up in their tax return. That's not, there's no such thing as that. Never met one. You know what? They'll, they'll say it. Oh yeah, I'd love to pay more in taxes. Raise the taxes on the rich. Bourgeois. All these billionaires that are like, we don't pay enough. Give it to the government. Go and donate. Oh, I would if I could. Oh no, you can. I guarantee you, you could conduct some sort of transaction where you just hand money over. There'd be all sorts of ways. You know why? Because there's ways to make sure that you don't pay taxes. We all have tax accountants and planners. I, I help coach them that show you everywhere, every way to mitigate your taxes. If you wanted to find a way to maximize your taxes so that you can pay as much as you can, you certainly could. But you don't. What you want is you want to raise taxes on people because you know you are in charge of that pork government. You're the one that's the crony. And that's why they want it. But I don't know how I would... I don't know if I could hire, um, you know, people who are socialist. And can a socialist hire somebody who's not a socialist? If you believe that silence is violence, what does that actually mean? 
You're saying that if I don't go out and march around, that somehow I'm against African American people? And that by me not doing that, that's the same as violence? And that by me not doing what you want me to do, your form of reparation or whatever that is, that somehow it's not just that that's wrong or immoral, but that's violence? How are you going to hire me? Folks, we're going to be, the, the divide is going to increase. In fact, the divide is increasing even more when we talk about where people live. I was just talking to a realtor here that was saying he has clients that came to him and said they're living in outstate and they're getting rid of, they're leaving outstate Minnesota and moving to Minneapolis because they couldn't stand the Trump signs. On the other side, I know a whole bunch of people that want nothing to do with that rioting and that stuff that happened during the George Floyd thing and the way that they're conducting their law enforcement and spending and schools. And they're moving out to the country. I know people that now that they don't have to commute, boy, they're saying, I'm out. I'm. Why wouldn't I go live out in a farm somewhere where all I have to do is dial in and do a virtual meeting? I mean, why would I live where the taxes are higher and the schools are worse and I have to deal with crime? Like, why would you do that? And I think we're going to see a giant movement here in America and it's going to be around where we live and how we work. And politics are going to creep into everything. I think they already kind of have. But I think it's going to be bigger than what we can imagine right now. I think what's going to happen is we're going to move with our feet. And it's going to cause all of us to become even more polarized. What's going to happen here real quick. You know, we already know that California is, is losing people. We know that New York is losing people. And while you can say, assign it to all sorts of policies, it comes down to why would you live in a place where you don't have freedom, where they take more of your money and it costs a lot to live, and now you've lost your culture because they're playing games with a lockdown. You know, what are the, all the benefits you had of, of that are, are dwindling. But there is the, am I around the people that, you know, I don't want to raise my taxes. I don't want to have these kind of policies happen. So what are you going to choose to do? My hope is that through humility and love and patience and kindness, which I think come from Christ through Jesus, that we'll be able to look past this stuff. Because while I wouldn't want to hire a socialist, I would hire a Democrat. Somebody that wants to protect the Constitution, the Second Amendment, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There are die for and defend rights that I think my Democrat friends agree with. We may disagree and like to score points and dunk on each other. But that's just good basketball, right? That's just good sport. But there are definitely groups of people on both sides, but in particular, it seems like it's emerging out of one side. But I think that we can look past this. We have to remember that I, while politics are important, they're not who you are. They're not how you conduct yourself. In fact, I know socialists that are amazing people. And I'm not calling, they call themselves socialists. I, I'm calling them that because they're actually, they, they claim to be socialists. They use a lot of expensive electronics from capitalism, but they call themselves socialists. And I guess I'm just bringing this up because I hope that each one of you will fight not to like, we demand justice. No. Be patient with each other. Be able to argue and have fun with it. Like, tease each other. It's okay to beat up on each other a little bit. But then let off. And don't assign character judgments to somebody's political leanings. Or at least don't... Actually, just judge people on the contents of their character. And let's all be the kind of people that have character that's really good, even if we have different political views. And I think that's something we can do. I think that America is going to be fine. I think that it's going to get interesting here, though. And uh, I think each one of us just need to have good character, turn the other cheek, and be able to argue hard and get over it. 
Good luck. God bless everybody. Um, hopefully this is helpful.